wish they wouldn't do this. Who? Do what? The people who pick out these Bible passages for us to read. They begin in the middle of the story. I still don't know what you're annoyed about. The first verse of this passage from the Gospel of Luke, it begins while they were talking about this. What were they talking about? Gotcha. I can help. I remember that part of the story. The disciples were talking about their experience of Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Two of them were walking along the road. They were feeling pretty down because Jesus had died. And then suddenly there was a man walking with them who explained everything. The disciples had no idea who he was, but when, the, when they got to Emmaus, they invited him in for a bit of lunch. When the mysterious stranger picked up a loaf of bread and broke it, they all recognized him. It was Jesus. They remembered how Jesus had broken the bread for them at the last meal they had together when they celebrated the Passover. Now I get it. So let's read the passage. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. While they were, walking, while they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them. Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But even in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in my name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. The word of the Lord. We can only imagine what the writer of Psalm 4 was going through while writing it. For the most part, it appears as though the writer is talking about his relationship with God. In verse 7, he says, You have put gladness in my heart, more than one grain of wine abound. He also talks several times about prayer. For example, in verse 1, he writes, Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. Again in verse 3, saying, Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. It is easy for us to praise the Lord when things in our life are going right, when we're content with where we are, what we have, and where we're going. It's not so easy when we're going through a rough patch. We all like to believe that we never stop and sometimes question what it is that God wants from us or where he's taking us on our journey through life. For almost all of us gathered here today, we've all had times where at one point or another, our faith was shaken and we began to question God. However, with a little bit of prayer, a great deal of trust, love, and compassion, we managed to pull through every time. That's why we're here, to, here today after all. We're all unified by our belief. Today I want to share a story about a time when my faith was personally shaken. As some of you may know, I play lacrosse and mechanics for Gary Senior High School, and several months ago we began off-season practices where one young individual caught my attention. Not only because he was the same position as me, but because of his natural leadership abilities, charisma, and caring attitude that he brought day in and day out. This young man was named Bishop Waters. For those that don't know Bishop, he was a freshman and tragically left us the night of January 3rd, 2018 at the young age of 14. This was shortly after surgery I had undergone on December 29th. I woke up the morning of the 4th at 7.30 a.m. to take pain medication for the surgery I went through. I remember taking my medicine and checking my phone because it had snowed, snowed the night before and with my luck we would end up having a delay because I wasn't going to school anyway. I received a text message from a very close friend of mine saying that he, we needed to talk. I was already put a bit on edge because I rarely ever talked to my friends over the phone. I told him that because of my surgery, I wasn't able to talk, but I would certainly listen to what he had to say. He called, I picked up the phone, and in tears he told me, Bishop killed himself last night. I thought that you should know since you won't be in school. He then hung up and left me to my thoughts. My immediate reaction was what I think is a typical reaction. I thought, no, this can't be happening. I just saw him a couple of weeks ago and he seemed perfectly fine to me. 
Then, throughout the day, I continued to push the thought out of my mind, telling myself that it wasn't true. And when I went back to school, Bishop would be there as he always was. I then transitioned into the stage where I began to question God. Why would he let this happen? What was the point of taking him so early? And is there even a God who would let something like this happen? That night, I went to sleep not knowing that my life and faith as I knew it would be forever changed. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning to again take my pain medication. Bishop immediately entered my thoughts, but instead of pushing them out of my mind this time, I embraced them. In the darkness of the morning, I opened up and began praying, leaving no emotion on tap and calling upon the Lord for all the strength, guidance, and infinite wisdom that he could give me. Lo and behold, he answered in a way that I wasn't expecting. An intense feeling of fear and anguish swept over me, and I immediately knew that this was not natural. I could sense another presence within my room, and I rapidly began putting together my thoughts, realizing what was happening. Frequently in the Bible, when a person is or is about to see an angel or some sort of other holy being, they become terrified. This is a feeling that I can personally tell all of you is a feeling like no other until you experience it. I remember saying, God, I'm sorry, I can't do it, I can't do this, please, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And the next thing I know, the feeling stopped. Everything went back to normal, and I opened up my eyes and looked around my room. I have no doubt in my mind that had I told God I was ready, I would have seen Bishop that night. So why am I sharing this story with you? Because in our faith, we're tested day in and day out. It's very easy for us to believe when things are going well for us, but it's very difficult during times of in intense grief or stress. It is important for us to remember that as Psalm 4 says, God will hear us when we call on him and put us at ease, making us rest secured. Even though it may seem that he is not answering our prayers or listening to us, he truly is. The Lord puts us to ease and protects us in the most trying times of our lives. Even in times of doubt, he is always right by our side, guiding us through with a steady hand. Despite what we say and do, we must pray with our whole hearts and remain steadfast in our faith. God is our rock and our salvation, and though we may be tempted to waver from it, he always leads us back with a steady hand. Amen.